Hey, this is Morgan from MorganOnScience.com and Madam Morgan on Twitter. And I'm also on Facebook, um, Science Cyclist, I believe it is. Uh, so you can find me there too. And um, I'm following up on the series that I've been doing on being productive, being successful as a scientist, and um, really following up on some of the ideas that I've been thinking about after reading Stephen Covey's book on the seven habits of highly effective people. I always have trouble with that title for some reason. And so in the book, you know, he talks about at the very beginning a, a really, really important um, concept that feeds into what I talked about yesterday. So yesterday I was saying, you know, there, there are some people who are in this reactive mode, you know, being driven by fear and telling people to work 70 hours a week in their labs because they're afraid of losing their grants or afraid of not having enough publications or this or that. Um, and my assessment of that situation is that that's reactive mode rather than proactive mode. And if you still don't buy the argument that I was making, um, I'd like you to bring to bring you to this other point that Stephen Covey made at the very beginning of the book, which is that in any system, it doesn't matter whether it's a human, uh, an individual, or a lab, or a, a company, a manufacturing plant, whatever. There is production, and there's production capacity. Those two things are different. Production is what you get out of a system immediately, right away. Production capacity is the long-term ability of the system to continue producing over time. So production and production capacity. Now often, there's a trade-off between these two things. If you force too much short-term production, you diminish the long-term production capacity. And on the other hand, in some situations, you have great production capacity, but no actual production. And so you have to find a balance between those two things. A great example is an automobile. So an automobile, the, the production is the short-term ability for you to drive somewhere in your car and drive perhaps quickly there in your car. The long-term production capacity is the total number of miles that that car will allow you to drive over its lifespan. So one of the things that you, know, you might do, you can get a lot of short-term production out of a car by going out and driving it really hard and really fast and not maintaining it because you don't have time, but then what happens to the production capacity? Well, if you don't, you know, slow down your production sometimes, stop and have an oil change and stop and check, check things and do tune-ups and, and, you know, treat it gently from time to time, not accelerate as fast, well, then your production capacity of your automobile is diminished. You won't get as many miles out of it because you're treating it, you're, you're overusing it in the short term to get more production in the short term at the trade-off of that long-term production capacity. Every single system that Stephen looked at and that I've considered has this trade-off. And human beings have that same trade-off um, and, and this is really important to realize you know when we're talking about for example the 70 hours a week having you know telling people that they have to be in the lab 70 hours a week or else. So what are you doing? Well you're certainly hopefully getting more production short term. But what are you doing to that production capacity? What happens if people get bitter, get angry, get burnt out? All of those things, bitter, angry, and burnt out, are reductions in the production capacity long term. Um, and people can only be driven so far. I mean, people are incredibly flexible. They're more flexible than an automobile, so it takes longer time to start diminishing that production capacity, but ultimately it does. If people aren't happy, you know, lack of happiness with one's job or with one's work, or satisfaction at least, lack of that is a dramatic blow to the production capacity. You know, if I'm going into work every day and just like, oh man, another day here, am I going to be as productive as I could be? No way. So I would argue that you really in anything that you do in running a lab or in your own work or in managing your own life, you have to consider that trade-off. You have to take care of not just the short-term production, which is how many hours you're working and how much work you're outputting right now, but also your long-term production capacity. Are you taking care of yourself or are you taking care of your employees so that over the long term you can continue to produce? Because that's what really matters. You know, you can crank out 30 papers this year and five grant proposals this year and get a whole bunch of a flurry of activity and flurry of production and a flurry of recognition, 
But then if you are so stressed out that, you know, you get cancer or you, uh, you know, you just quit your job, well, then that doesn't matter very much because you've eliminated all your long-term production capacity. So I hope you think about that and leave me comments. I want to have a discussion with you about it. Um, and the comments can be left on my blog at morganonscience.com. And you can also tweet at me at metamorgan on Twitter. And I look forward to hearing with you, hearing from you. And tomorrow I'll have the very last episode in this series. I know it's been a little bit long, but hopefully it's given you some interesting and unique insights into how to manage and balance your life. Um, because I think these concepts are really important. And there's a lot more here than I could possibly go into in this video series. But at least it scratches the surface in a way that hopefully got you a treat. So until tomorrow, uh, this is Morgan signing up. Bye now.